stories about similar era, but focus more on David and Solomon's positive aspects, I'd like to start with the Chronicles from this week. And um, to give you some background idea of today's passage, I um, yeah, made a very short video clip about Uzzah's, um, yeah, Uzzah's story. So why don't we look at it and come back? Uzzah's bumbling leads to humbling and doesn't get God's glory back. Remember how the ark was captured back when Samuel was a boy living with Eli? And how Dagon, the false god, fell plop on the ground and God's enemies got sick with bumps? So they sent the ark back to Israel on a cart pulled by mooing oxen? Well, the ark had been at the house of a man named Abinadab ever since. The whole time Samuel was leading the people, and the whole time Saul was king, and now with David. God's holy box had been just sitting, 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 with no special care or treatment. David wanted that to change. He wanted God's holy ark with him in Jerusalem. Let's go get God's holy box, he told everybody. Do you remember anything about the instructions God gave to Moses about how to move the ark? God had given some very specific instructions about moving it. He told them how to cover and carry it and who should carry it. And Moses made sure to tell the people, and they wrote it down just like God told them to at the time. But now when the time came to move it, no one looked up God's specific instructions. They just did what they'd seen done before. The ark rolled in on an ox cart when the Philistine sent it, so they thought they'd just roll it on into Zion on an ox cart. They thought that was a pretty logical and smart way to move it. But this is the throne where God's glory rests. They can't bring back God's glory using any old way they want. They need to follow the instructions as the Lord commanded. They evidently thought they were smarter than God. So up on the brand new ox cart, the Ark of God was placed. And off it rolled on its way to Zion, the city of David. Uzzah and his brother didn't want anything to happen to God's holy box. So they were guiding the new cart down the hill. Uzzah's brother was walking in front of the Ark while David and all Israel were energetically worshiping God. They were singing and playing music with tambourines, rattles, and cymbals. Then suddenly, one of the oxen carrying the ark tripped on something in the road. The ox stumbled, the cart jumbled, and the ark tumbled. Uzzah quickly reached out his hand to stop it from falling. He didn't want the ark to hit the ground. But once his hand touched God's holy ark, Uzzah died right then and there. The whole worshiping celebration stopped. Silent. Uzzah's well, so the passage I would like to share with you today is First Chronicles chapter 16, verse 37 to 43. And the title is Small Acts, Great Impact, which is about honoring God in the mundane. And I would like to show you the passage video of today. Um, so let's check out the passage video and come back. David left Asaph and his associates before the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord to minister there regularly, according to each day's requirements. He also left Obed-Edom and his 68 associates to minister with them. Obed-Edom, son of Judupham, and also Hosah, the gatekeeper. David left Zadok the priest and his fellow priests before the tabernacle of the Lord at the high place in Gibeon, to present burnt offerings to the Lord on the altar of burnt offering regularly, morning and evening, in accordance with everything written in the law of the Lord which he had given Israel. With them were Heman and Jedutham, and the rest of those chosen and designated by name to give thanks to the Lord, for his love endures forever. Heman and Jedutham were responsible for the sounding of the trumpets and cymbals, and for the playing of the other instruments for sacred song. The sons of Judutham were stationed at the gate. Then all the people left, each for their own home, and David returned home to bless his family. 
so as you have seen through the video clip, the Israelites were deeply shaken as they couldn't bring the Ark of the Covenant due to Uzzah's death. And after considering God's will for three months, David decides to bring the Ark from the house of Obed-Edom to Jerusalem. And today's passage is about what happened at that point. He appoints Asaph and his associates to minister before the Ark, worshiping, serving, and guarding it daily, morning, and evening. And reflecting on today's passage, I thought about how we can safeguard the privilege that presented to us by God, which is similar to David. Even when God's anger aroused against David's descendants for their sin, God remembered David, his servant. So the point is, Despite life's myriad trials and weaknesses, how did David manage to uphold his privileges and pass them down to his descendants? I'd like to share two insights derived from today's passage with you. And the first thing is treasure the familiar. So today's verse 37 says, David left Asaph and his associates before the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord to minister there regularly according to each day's requirements. And in today's scripture, David diligently ensured that the duties before the Ark were carried out daily with careful preparation. And often we initially value precious things deeply, but as time passes, Familiarity may breed complacency, like when you have a child, you know how precious he or she is, and you think of the long time you had them, you know, and had that difficult time, and you suddenly forget about it <laughs> when they make troubles or they don't listen to you, or that's what's happening to me these days. And as I'm preparing for the sermon, I yeah, really thought about oh, how precious my um, ordinary life is and my family, my kids are. And actually many um, tend to neglect what has become familiar until its absence shatters our lives and realizing its true value. But in fact, true blessings lie not in unexpected novelties, but in familiar routines shared with loved ones daily. And perhaps Asaf and his associates mentioned in today's passage might have taken their daily routines for granted as well. However, David commanded in verse 40, it says, to present burnt offerings to the Lord on the altar, burnt offering regularly, morning and evening, in accordance with everything written in the law of the Lord, which he had given Israel. So David didn't take God's work for granted. Even if it became routine, he esteemed it as precious. He loved God daily. And let's look at David's life. It didn't actually end with the transportation of the ark. Instead of merely thinking about building a temple while the ark was in a tent, he was in a palace. He resolved to construct a temple for God, and he prayed for it. And his passion for God actually moved him more than his determination to build a temple. And God promised David that his descendants would build the temple because of the bloodshed in his hands, yet David didn't stop there. He made all the preparations for building the temple perfectly until his last breath. So friends, this is the point. From the first encounter with God to the end, David's passion and love for God that remained as fervent as ever and we need David's heart, a heart passionately in love with God, even today. In the story of the little prince, there's a passage. It says, don't let familiarity cause you to lose preciousness. And this is one of the key words that really matches to 
today's um, sermon. And I hope we don't forget the value of repetition. I hope we don't just take it as a routine and just think like, oh, I'm so tired of it. And that's one of the things I really love to complain about. But preparing for the sermon, I thought about, okay, it's a truly blessing that we have routine. And um, I just take it for granted, like kids going to school and coming back and doing their work. But um, as I started studying in a seminary, they're like packed of classes. So nine to four, like Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Yeah, and I sit in the classroom and thinking like, wow, my kids are doing a great job. My children are really doing a great job. And uh, I'm feeling back about the student life. And as I'm also the student, I kind of feel the respect for my children that doing their job uh, in an ordinary routine that should not be really easy for them. They want to go out and play, but staying there and doing that, um, that's a great thing they should learn. And I'm also learning to be back to the student and just assuming that, okay, I'm back to, back to high school, <laughs> okay, just think about it <laughs> and yeah, just do what I do. And actually in uh, the scripture, uh, Leviticus chapter 26, verse two states, observe my Sabbaths and have reverence for my sanctuary. I am the Lord. So God esteems those who honor him. And let us not become negligent due to familiarity. And our worship should be offered as if it were our last. And that's what I also have in mind. And also when I prepare for the possibility, you know, prepare for the sermon and the service, I started having this as in my, like this worship might be someone's last in their lifetime. I might not see the person again who came to DBC, who might never come back to church Maybe this is the last time in his lifetime or her lifetime to worship here. And I try to do my best of best, even though I'm very uh, weak and just a beginner here. And the Israelites, actually out of familiarity, they perform their daily service to God merely as a formality and carelessness. And ultimately, they lost the privilege of being a chosen people of God. So Malachi chapter 1 verse 6 says, A son honors his father and a slave his master. If I am a father, where is the honor due me? If I am a master, where is the respect due me? Says the Lord Almighty. It is you, priest, who show contempt for my name. But you ask, how have we shown contempt for your name? So faith is not evaluated or acknowledged through impressive events or singular acts of service. Faith is actually judged by how much we treasure God in our everyday lives. Only those who understand the value of what is familiar can enjoy the privilege of being children of the king. And today I want to share with you the words that God gave to Eli, the priest who lost that privilege. For Samuel chapter 2, verse 30 says, Therefore, the Lord, the God of Israel, declares, I promise that members of your family will minister before me forever. But now the Lord declares, Far be it from me, those who honor me, I will honor, but those who despise me, will be disdained. So if one does not treasure and exalt God in worship, how can God exalt such a person? God loves those who generously offer themselves to him and love him more. And how can God make someone honorable who is stingy towards him? And the second answer I gleaned from today's passage is this. Regard the trivial as important. Regard the trivial as important. And verse 38 of today's passage says, 
He also left Obed-Edom and his 68 associates to minister with him, Obed-Edom, son of Jejuthun, and also Hosa were gatekeepers. So after bringing the ark to the Jerusalem, David appointed Obed-Edom as a gatekeeper of the ark. And from a human perspective, what do you think of being a gatekeeper? Is it a wonderful thing to do? Well, being a gatekeeper might seem trivial, but from God's perspective, this role is profoundly significant. Guarding the ark is an esteemed position. And that's why David granted this honored position to the person who had guarded the ark for three months. In Nadab and Abihu, as seen in Leviticus chapter 10, verse 1, they regarded their role as priests lightly and handled it carelessly. And let's compare them with these gatekeepers. Leviticus chapter 10, verse 1 states, Aaron's sons, Nadab and Abihu, took their censers, put fire in them, and added incense. And they offered an authorized fire before the Lord, contrary to his command. So they offered strange fire before the Lord while intoxicated, which God had not commanded. And the consequence, as described in the next verse, says, So fire came out from the presence of the Lord and consumed them, and they died before the Lord. Even if you have a vision for the whole world, this trivial act of coming humbly before the Lord to worship today, that might be more important. In the midst of the scenes of my life that God has entrusted to me, no matter how trivial, if it's for God, I must do my best. I must be faithful. And therefore, God entrusts great task to those who do their best in small matters. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 17, Nevertheless, each person should live as a believer in whatever situation the Lord has assigned to them, just as God has called them. This is the rule I lay down in all the churches. So living a life devoted to God in whatever position or circumstance he has assigned to you today, regardless of people or surroundings, is how we safeguard the privilege of being children of the king. And there are indeed many roles we must fulfill in our lives. However, serving God, loving God, and worshiping God, that may seem trivial and become familiar, yet... Since God has appointed and called us, let us diligently fulfill these tasks with gratitude. God didn't make us all the same. He made each of us unique, and he loves us. So regardless of how familiar the roles God has entrusted to us be seen, may we cherish them. And when you have the point like complaining, why are you doing this to me? I don't want to care about it, God. Is that really what you want to do to me? You know, when that happens, you really need to come back to the scriptures and think about the purpose he sent you there and here in your life. And I believe you will find out the reason you are there at that moment. And even if they appear trivial in our eyes, let us view them from God's perspective and consider them important so that we may enjoy God's grace. So to wrap up, when David initially sought to bring the ark, the opinions of leaders were his top priority. The leader's opinion and the followed by people's voices and God's word was last. However, after the incident of Uzzah's death, David changed. He prioritized God at first in his life. So today I've shared two things with you. The first one was treasure even the familiar things 
And the second one was consider even the smallest task important if they are for God. And may we live as saints more beautiful at the end than at the beginning. In the name of our Lord. So let us pray.